Anegdota o Tymie, jak ktoś się go kiedyś spytał, jak pan to robi, że pan jest taki super błyskotliwy na imprezach i na przyjęciach. I on powiedział, przygotowuje się. Discipline is kind of a meta thing because there is a discipline of discipline, you know? Um, any kind of discipline makes me feel like I'm one of Pavlov's dogs. You know, I, the more that I give myself carrots for succeeding or, or some reward for succeeding, the more I'm able to do it. And you have to get your body into this rhythm. It's a very, like, you have to force yourself to do it But often I'll set a time limit in which I turn off my phone or I shut down my computer and I can set a stopwatch and say, you know, okay, I'm only going to do it for an hour. And in my mind, I know that it's just an hour, you know, that I'm going to do this one thing. But you set yourself a task and you learn that discipline is not actually that painful. And so you have to discipline yourself into discipline. And then you have to understand that, I was thinking about this this morning actually, if I'm approaching a piece of music, it's not gonna be that I can do it for six hours tonight and it'll come out great tomorrow. It's much more likely that I can do it for an hour every day for six days and then it'll be great. So, you know, Sometimes um, discipline is knowing where to set the bar as well. It's like when you go on a diet, if you've ever gone on a diet of any kind, if you cut everything out right away, it's really difficult. If you do something that's more sustainable, then you can slowly change the way you are, the way you eat, the way you, your body responds to something, the way you receive pleasure from something. Talent to jest umiejętność koncentrowania się na jednym zadaniu cały czas bez końca. Cały czas bez przerwy na tym nudnym zadaniu. I to jest pisanie. To jest wypadkowe dupy z krzesłem. Musisz siedzieć i codziennie pisać. I jak czegoś nie umiesz napisać, to nie rezygnujesz, tylko przechodzisz do następnej sceny i ją piszesz. No, to jest ciekawe w ogóle, bo ja teraz jestem trochę w temacie, ym, ponieważ rzuciłam palenie. I, i, I to jest ciekawe, kiedy się pojawia rutyna, nie? taka właśnie, czy, czym, czym nazywamy, co to jest ta dyscyplina, nie? To jest po prostu ścieżka w mózgu, która jest wzmocniona na skutek powtarzania czynności. To jest bardzo trudne, nie? No bo to trzeba właśnie cały czas pracować z super ego, które cię atakuje i z ego, które się domaga, nie? To jest też, bo, to jest nie, bo to się też źle kojarzy do słowa dyscyplina, wydaje mi się, Dys, dyscyplinką. Takie, taki linijka, którą się uderzało dzieciom w dłonie, nie? czyli z przemocą się kojarzy. Ciągle jestem w podróżach, ciągle jestem gdzieś nad Atlantykiem albo czasami nad Pacyfikiem. W hotelach mam rytuał, na pewno, bo mi mówią ok, room taki, a taki, 311. Ja, ja mówię chwileczkę do żony, żona już wie, więc zostawiam, jak jestem z żoną, bagaż z nią, idę zobaczyć pokój 311. Stoję w tym pokoju, i wiem, czy ja chcę tam mieszkać, czy nie chcę tam mieszkać. Po prostu ściany to mówią. 
I jak nie chcę mieszkać, to idę i mówię, czy mogę zobaczyć jeszcze, jakie inne pokoje są do wzięcia. Czasami nawet i 7, i 8 innych pokojów oglądam, a może i 10. Jest coś w, prze, w przestrzeni, w pomieszczeniach, gdzie chce się być i gdzie nie chce się być. Wiesz, yy, a propos rutyny, też zawsze zauważyłam, że ja lubię, jak myślę o na przykład o czymś, o spektaklu, na przykład idę z psem, że lubię chodzić zawsze tymi samymi drogami, że nie lubię w parku zmieniać jakby na przykład, że jak ja skręcam w prawo i zataczam koło i wracam w lewo, to na przykład nie mogę iść w lewo i wrócić w prawo, jak myślę, no bo wtedy to mnie za bardzo zajmuje, absorbuje, wtedy mi się skręci, nie skręci, że ja muszę iść dokładnie tą samą drogą, że ja nie muszę w ogóle myśleć o tym, gdzie idę i wtedy mogę te procesy poświęcić na coś innego, więc lubię bardzo, rzeczywiście jakby ktoś obserwował w parku, że ja zawsze chodzę tą samą drogą, no żeby sobie zaoszczędzić ten ram. It's the ego is the water boiling in the cauldron. The super ego is the lid that is pushing the everything down. And the id is the steam that escapes. And so I'm not interested in the ego, the, the water. There's plenty of that to go around, you know what I mean? And that is, that is your fundamental material on some level for you. And I, and I think the superego can be a pain in the ass and it can be very useful depending on what it's doing. But the id, how can that be the most essential form of you as opposed to the ugly and gross parts of the ego, which we don't need. If you're terrified, instead of feeling like you need to be pumped up on drugs, on steroids, on the adrenaline of the audience, if you feel a kind of generosity, if you feel a kind of humility that you are not the greatest, uh, trumpet you are not the loudest speaker to project this brilliance to the audience but you are simply a vessel and through that vessel resonates the art from 400 years ago the music that is happening in the pit below you but most importantly as everyone has said you are a mirror and resonating through you are all of the people watching you, their eyes, their individual experiences, the way that they feel. You are only serving these people in front of you. You're serving the music that comes through you and you are collaborating you're not serving yourself in any way. You may get great pleasure from that. You may, there may be great side effects, but um, that's how I approach it. And I think when I'm with the kids in the Bronx, I don't change the way I perform. I don't perform less intensely than when I'm on the stage. Um, I sometimes think back at how confident I used to be and it just shocks me, you know, walking into an audition and just knowing I was going to get it. I just knew it. And I, I don't feel that way anymore. You know, like, you know, life has a, a, a very clear way of, of showing you your, your weaknesses, your limitations. And I, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, one thing I see in my field, and I'm sure I was probably an example of this, if, you know, particularly as a, as a man, a young man, if all you are is ego, it can be impressive, but it gets boring very quickly. Um, you, you see bolster and you see like, here's my balls, look at them, you know, it, it, 
you know, you see confidence and confidence and, and these things can be very impressive bravado, but does it sustain your interest for three hours of an opera performance? Probably not. It might sustain half of an aria, but then you go, what else? What else is to this guy? What, what other levels can this guy bring? And to be honest, this is something I've struggled with. And I guess something I still struggle with, um, you know, particularly some of the roles I play, I often play, you know, nasty characters. Um, and one thing I try to do, particularly as a guy, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm big, I'm a big guy, you know, tall, strong, is try and access some element of vulnerability and try to emphasize that, uh, try to let the strength come naturally as it does and, and try and focus on the flip side of things. Um, e ego is, is important, I think, because you know what? Being a, a performer, is terrifying, it's terrifying, really. Um, you know, if for so many people, it's their worst nightmare. Hey, do you want to stand in front of 4,000 people and sing? You know, for, for people that'll wake them up in a cold sweat at night. And this is something we willingly go out to do. So you need your ego to sort of make you do that, I think, in a way. But you need to have more. You need to have more elements to your personality than just ego. I'm not superstitious, but I do have one um, I guess not ritual, what would you call it? Mantra or uh, idea that I think has been really helpful. And I didn't make it up, I was told it. And that is that technical proficiency facilitates artistry. Uh, or I guess you could say in the context of this conversation, technical proficiency facilitates creativity. And I, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but you know, if I can't, if I don't have the technical ability to um, sing a phrase in multiple different ways, then my artistry and my creativity, my interpretive ability is restricted by my technical limitations. You know, I can only sing this phrase really loud or I can only sing this phrase really fast. Well, fine, but then I'm limited. I'm not really interpreting, am I? I'm just doing it the way I can. Um, I think you see this with, with really fantastic athletes as well. You know, the more technically, I, I love basketball. I love NBA basketball. So, you know, if you watch someone who's truly magnificent, um, someone like LeBron James or, you know, back in the 90s, Michael Jordan, it's, they're really beautiful to watch. So, like beautiful to watch them perform. And one of the reasons is they've become so technically proficient that they there's an artistry to the way to their game uh, they have so many options available it's you can't predict it um, you think they're going to go this way but they can go that way or they can hang you know hang in the air and do this with the ball and I, I think this is a really common thread that, that we sometimes I don't know underestimate 